Hello and welcome to part seven of this Tableau Made Easy series. Now, so far in this series, we have imported our earthquake data in CSV form and we have created the amazing visualization that you see on screen here using the functionality like marks, filters and pages. At the end of the last tutorial, we discussed that while here we can see where a lot of the earthquakes are happening, it's hard for us to extract any more specific, perhaps aggregated insights that might be interesting. So things like the number of earthquakes in each location. Currently, we'd have to count these up one by one from the map, which would be less than ideal. So let's go and create ourselves a nice simple bar chart that will provide us this information really clearly and easily. All right, so if we head down to the bottom of our Tableau window here, we can see there is this little button which has a chart image with a plus symbol on it. Let's click that. And there we go, we have a nice new worksheet, completely blank, ready to go. So what do we want to do here? Well, for this idea of earthquake count by location, I think it would be nice and easy to visualize all of this by putting out location down the left. So in other words, to represent our rows going across the page. And to do this, we can just grab our location variable here and drag that onto the rows section of our sheet. Conversely, we could have also dragged it up into the rows area at the top there. The result would be exactly the same. Once we've done that, let's go and get our ID variable here. And let's drag that onto the main section where we've got these ABCs here. And well, this isn't a bar chart at all, is it? It's more along the lines of a pivot table. And the reason that it hasn't automatically gone and created us a chart or even just summed up or counted the data is that our ID variable is actually a dimension. It's being considered a categorical variable. So Tableau is enabled to count it up to aggregate the number of earthquakes, but we can easily modify this. Let's start by removing the ID variable from our visualization. So we can either click on the drop down here and then down the bottom, we can go to remove or, and this is what I often do, we can just grab the ID variable here and drag that away back over here. So we want a numeric version of ID that we can use for aggregation. Now, like we discussed when we quickly spoke about dimensions and measures in an earlier tutorial, we could change our ID variable to instead be a measure. And if you remember to do that, we would simply click on the small drop down of the ID variable there, and we could go down to convert to measure, but I actually don't want to do that here. I think our ID variable could come in handy as a dimension, so I really don't want to mess with it. As another idea, we could make a copy of it by again going up and clicking on the drop down and then duplicate. And then we could change that copied version, which we could give another name to a measure. But since our earthquake data simply contains one row per earthquake, in other words, each row of our data set contains a unique earthquake, I want to do something really simple and something that will help us later on as well. All we're going to do is go down to this blank space on the bottom left below where all of our variables are and we're going to right click. And then we're going to click create calculated field. Now we are going to talk about calculated fields in much more depth in future tutorials. But for now, let's just do something super, super simple in this box that's popped up. Let's give our new field a name. So I'm just going to call this earthquake counter. And then all we're going to do in this main part of the box, which is where you'd put in your logic or calculations for your calculated field, we're simply going to put in the number one. So, and again, we'll be covering off calculated fields in more detail later on. All we've done here is essentially created ourselves a new field or new column of data. And in each row of that new field, we'd have the number one. And this will be perfect for us counting the number of earthquakes per location. So let's click on OK to actually create this new field. And we can see it here on the left with the name we gave it, earthquake counter. So let's drag that variable back onto the main section of our worksheet and drop it here. And that's still not a bar chart, but we're not far away. Tableau is now treating this as a numeric value that we can aggregate. It's just in table form. Now, before we do go ahead and turn this data into a chart, here in the middle of screen, we can actually see that Tableau has made an assumption about what to do with our variable, and it has chosen to sum it. Now, in our particular case, because we're working with a value of one per earthquake, 
this will be no worries at all. It'll actually work fine. But if we were working with a numeric version of our ID, for example, so perhaps we did choose to convert it to a measure, then this would give us some pretty bogus results it would end up adding up all of the ID numbers. And this would give us some enormous and incorrect result for what we're trying to achieve. Now, like I said, this doesn't actually matter for our calculated field, but if we did want to change this from a sum to a count, we could. So let's do that now, as it's a good thing to know how to do. So if we go over to our marks card here and we click the drop down for our summed earthquake counter variable, if we head down to measure here, we can see we've got many options. For us, we could change this to count, and that, as expected, doesn't change anything, but it's probably a more pure way of approaching this problem. If we were dealing with numeric ID values, then we would most likely actually go with count distinct, as we'd want to be counting the unique earthquake IDs per location. Anyway, like I say, a good thing to know how to do, and we'll see more of this as we progress with our dashboard. So now back to what we're looking to build here, and we're still dealing with a table of data. We want to turn this into a bar chart, or technically I guess we're talking about a horizontal bar chart here. So let's actually do that now. And thankfully Tableau makes this super easy for us. Over at the top right of screen, let's click the show me button. And from there we are given a lot of chart options to pick from. The ones that are grayed out there, they're essentially not available to us with our current data setup. And what I mean by that is we currently have one dimension, our locations, and one measure, the count of unique earthquakes. So something like a scatter plot, it would never work, and thus it becomes unavailable for us. The same for maps. We don't have any variables that are tagged as geographic in our current view in the middle of screen here. And again, Tableau just says, you can't use that right now. What is available to us, however, is our bar chart here. So let's click on that. And there we go. So this is much, much easier for us to see the exact frequency of earthquakes over the 30 day period for each of our locations. So let's get rid of our chart options by again, just clicking the show me button at the top there. And then if we hover over Alaska here, for example, we can see the tooltip pop up and it tells us that there were 270 earthquakes there. If we head back to our sheet one with our map, and actually let's get rid of our pages functionality for now. So I'm gonna drag that away down here to get rid of it. And that will populate all of our earthquakes again. We can see that that highish figure of 270 for Alaska probably seems about right, at least in terms of there being a high number or high frequency of earthquakes in Alaska. Cool, so back to our bar chart again. And while we can most definitely see that Alaska did have a high number of earthquakes. What I think would be super interesting for the end user of our visualization here would be to know where Alaska sits when compared to all other locations. If we scroll down our bar chart, we can see it's really, really, really long, but it's in alphabetical order, and this isn't that intuitive. Again, Tableau makes solving this nice and easy once you know how. So if we head down to the very bottom of our chart here, we can see the label for our X axis, which is count of earthquake counter. If we hover our mouse on there, we can see this little chart and arrow symbol. And if we click that, awesome. This is exactly what we wanted and we can really quickly get that piece of information that we were after, which was Alaska had 270 earthquakes, and this was third most of any of our locations. So Hawaii above it had 348, and then Puerto Rico had 386. Very, very interesting. But let's actually make sure that our stakeholder doesn't have to do all of this hard work of hovering over each of these. Let's add those counts in. So back over to the left, let's grab our earthquake counter variable, and let's drag that onto our label mark. And there we go, we can see those labels on each of our bars. But again, it has summed it by default. So for consistency, let's change that to be a count. So let's click on the drop down there and then down to measure and let's click count. There we go. Cool, so let's think about what else we could do here. Let's perhaps get a little saucy and change the colors of the bars. So let's click onto the color mark and I don't know, let's just choose orange. We don't have to do this, of course, but when you're learning, seeing this sort of functionality a few times, it can really help it all sink in. 
Now, the last thing I want to do here is address the fact that our horizontal bar chart is extremely long. So we probably have 10 or 15 locations with a high number of earthquakes and everywhere else has pretty low counts. Let's say that we wanted to truncate this a little bit. If we go and get our location variable and we drag that up onto our filters shelf, we again get this pop-up that we've seen before. But instead of just selecting all, for example, like we did last time, let's go over to this fourth tab here at the top, which is called top. And in there, let's click the by field checkbox. And we're gonna go for the top in locations by earthquake counter. And we can see that earthquake counter is being treated as a count, which is perfect. So let's try something like the top 30, for example. And if we hit apply, we can see that take place. And if we're happy with that, let's just hit OK. And now we're back at our chart with those changes. Now, if we wanted to remove that top 30 specification, we could just remove our filter completely by dragging it off the filter shelf. And if we wanted to change it, we could just go up to the filter shelf here, click on the drop down of the filter itself, then edit filter, and we could make and apply any other changes we wanted. Now, I'm actually not too phased about us having a long bar chart. So I think I might actually remove that filter. But it is, of course, good to know how to do things like this here in Tableau because they can come in very handy. Now, very quickly, thinking about our stakeholders again, I believe that being able to filter the results that are shown on this chart by date would be super useful. It would mean that if they saw something on the map that intrigued them, they can dig into these numbers and cross-reference them. So let's add that quickly now. Let's add our date time variable here onto our filters shelf. And in the pop-up box here, we're gonna select month, day, year, as again, the days one up here is just the date number within each month. And I would rather we had the full date to work with. So month, day, year, let's hit next. Let's select all, and then let's hit OK to add that filter in. Remembering back to the prior tutorial where we added filters to our map, if we hit the drop down here on our new filter, we can hit show filter, and there it is over on the right. Now you don't have to do this, but like last time, I'm gonna go over and click on the drop down of our filter options here, and I'm gonna change it to something that I think looks a bit nicer. And this time, just to showcase another option, I'm gonna change it to instead be a single value slider, purely because I think it looks nicer. So with this here, we can have all at the very left if we click there, so that's all of our data all at once. And then as we move across using the arrow, we get the updated counts for each individual day in our data set. Very, very, very cool. All right, well done on creating and modifying this bar chart. I think it will really complement our map for our stakeholders to really dig into the data and find the key insights they need. We'll leave it there for this tutorial, but to set up where we're going next, we can see on our current chart, if we move our slider all the way back to the left for all, that Alaska, for example, had quite a high number of earthquake events, and we talked about this before. But when thinking about our map, I remember that Alaska's earthquakes, they all seem to be quite small in terms of magnitude. So in the next tutorial, we're gonna complement the information that we've created here. And on this very same worksheet, we're gonna create another bar chart that will show again by location, the maximum and perhaps the average magnitude of the earthquakes within each location. This will be really, really interesting to see. So make sure that you save your workbook. So save to Tableau Public. And then, as always, I will see you in the next tutorial.